Hey guys, it's Debbie Potts and I'm just getting ready for the day and wanted to take a little time out to share this review I'm working on. Dr. Stacey Sims was finally on the Huberman Lab podcast. Dr. Andrew Huberman has like almost 6 million followers. So if you're on his podcast, you can really make a good impact on the entire world on what you're trying to share. Stacey Sims talked over two hours to Huberman about female athletes fueling and training to improve performance and the aging process. There are a lot of things I wanted to go a little deeper in. So what I did is I had the whole podcast transcribed from someone on my team and I went through some of those key areas that I find interesting but then I took them and wanted to learn more. So I did a little Debbie rabbit hole podcast blog that I want to go through. So I'm going to have to break this up because I try to keep these 30 minutes or so. And I will share my screen. You can find all this on debbiepots.net website. And I was going through the notes that I have from the podcast and found it interesting. If you have followed me, the podcast we started 12 years ago, Fit Fat Fast, John Smith and I, I shared my story as that we started the podcast 2010 when I was high charging athlete. I was thriving. I was doing my best in each race, placing it top in my age group, top three, and then 2013 hit and went downhill. I was doing low carb. I was doing more fasted workouts using fat coffee, bulletproof kind of coffee back then and doing a lot of exercise. Plus I was running my own business, which is constant stress. And I was teaching classes and training clients and run group workouts and doing all that on top of my 20 hours training workout week training for Mark Allen elite team to race. Now, that all accumulates what I call my the beaker of stress. Too much of everything, external stressors and internal sources of hidden stress, we say as FDM practitioners, accumulate. So we talk about acute stress versus chronic stress. And I've talked about that many episodes, but Stacey Sims information, I like to dive into because I am a female. And as she says, men are not... Uh, women are not small men. And I was told to look up her information on her first book, Roar. And then I read her next level book years ago from my friend, Nikki said, you need to connect Dr. Stacy Sims. Stacy Sims never wanted to be on my podcast because, because it was called the low carb athlete. And that's what she does not suggest. We need some carbohydrates in and around the workout to improve fat oxidation and performance. Also, we want to look at not doing fasted exercise for females versus men can do well more fasted exercise. As I do metabolic testing over the years, and I used to do it with New Leaf 2005, 2010, so a long time ago. Now I'm doing Pinoy testing in North San Diego that we need to look at what intensity, where you're burning fuel source. What do we need to adjust with your macronutrients and meal timing and fueling in and around your workout? Okay, so with that, you can go back to my website and find this podcast blog. I did training the aging athlete insight from Dr. Stacey Sims in July 28, uh, a year ago, talking about what you're doing now to improve the aging process. If you're feeling fat, puffy, and sluggish, there's a great blog and notes from her programs and blogs and episodes she's done on people's podcasts. Then I put together this video she did strength training women in zone two that we need to not do so much zone two, which is funny. She's finally on Huberman because Huberman and Peter TRL was talking about, we all need this zone two training. And I was happy to see Stacey Sims say not women, we don't need the same amount. So I tried to put notes here. Some of it's just kind of bullet list and cut and paste, but also just resources to her videos 
why not so much zone two than men and explaining that. So I've done many episodes on that, talking about metabolic flexibility. We are already able to more burn, more fat, oxidize more fat and less carb during prolonged exercise than men. Women have greater metabolic flexibility because there's a greater ability to switch between fatty acid and glucose, depending where the nutrients are available. And that gets nitty gritty details of the MCT4 and the MCT1, all that stuff you can get into exercise physiology. Now, she talks from her blog about, you know, what should do what women do for zone two. I think it depends as... I have some athletes that I coach, female athletes are training for a half Ironman. They're training for Ironman or a marathon or 50K or multi-day adventure race of another client doing. And they do need zone two training. But if you're not training for any race specific, you don't need as much zone two as the men suggest on their platform. So you always have to look at what the research, who is it done on? What were their ages? Men and women, but also women we then need to break up the pre-menopause, perimenopause, post-menopause phases in our life. So I would look back and check out that blog on wpots.net. Now, Huberman Lab, you can find the link. You can't see the sun shining. This one was just launched July 22nd, 2024. Stacey Sims on female specific exercise nutrition for health. Then I was just trying to find my own blog page and came across this summary episode, Dr. Stacy Simp. So I am finding that this is a, another great resource. I just spent all this time doing it for myself to share with you because I like to dig a little deeper in topics as KISS prepped in and fat oxidation. And what I want to dive into, what are some options to get that? pre-workout fuel. So nutritional guidelines, protein intake, women should consume one to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight daily. Basically what I've been saying, Dr. Gabrielle Lyons suggests support muscle maintenance and growth. This aligns with the need for higher protein intake to bolster body composition, overall health fats. Stacey Sims prefers. She doesn't really talk a lot about fat. If you notice she prefers plant-based sources as avocados, nuts, seeds, and olive oil. Small amounts of animal fats like butter, full fat dairy can be beneficial, but she doesn't ever talk about meat, fat, ancestral health. That's not her area. And she's more of a plant-based person. She, I've heard her say she grew up driving by farms and doesn't like factory meat, which I think most people shouldn't, but eating animal meat is not what she talks about so much. So exercise, enjoyment, brain health. She talks about exercise should be enjoyable to sustain long-term habits. As myself, I'm not racing. I'm not training for any race. I'm training for life. And I enjoy, as she said on the podcast, doing a long bike ride. I love going for like tomorrow, we're gonna do this five hour bike ride and just stop for coffee and get some water along the way. And it's not stressful. I'm not training as I used to very intensely for a race that I would be so serious and have to get that exact mileage and then some, and then go run hard 30 minutes. And now it's just enjoyment. So it's a very different mindset. I don't really care if we stop for coffee for 10 minutes, get back on the bike and not worry about just what is my speed? I never got into watts, but going by my heart rate. Now, brain health, and I went through my genetics the other day, BDA, EDNF, brain-derived neural factors benefit from exercise. And maybe we talk about that a little bit, but tailored pre-training nutrition, important, but flexibility and timing. She talks about in type of meal based on individual needs and preferences encouraged for optimal performance. Andrew Huberman highlights that Dr. Sims' advice is not just about avoiding menopause-related bone loss, but leveraging training and nutrition to enhance overall health span and performance. You can find this on his page. I'll put it in the show notes. Now, 
there's great related questions, key topics, and more so. But what I'm working on is, again, transcription, and then take that, organized it in chat GPT, and then go back and go a little deeper dive. Let me touch on this, then I'm doing a Instagram live in 20 minutes with my friend, Dr. Boz, Annette Bosworth. So check out Dr. Boz on my Instagram. Now, the interview discussed intermittent fasting. I've talked about this for the last four years. Key points, intermittent fasting versus time-restricted eating. Intermittent fasting involves a 20 hour fasting window, typically delaying the first meal until noon or later. Time restricted eating aligns with their natural circadian rhythm, having meals during the day and avoiding food after dinner. I have really made this switch personally. I was fasting until 11 a.m. and trying to eat all my calories by four o'clock, five o'clock. PM. And so let's see, that's be five, six hour eating period. I was doing way too much fasting. In the last couple of years, I finally started eating post-workout after I shower, get ready. And I just sat, I had uh, eight at 8 AM is what I typically find in myself eating because I am often swimming at lunchtime. That would be four hours later. So I ideally need to eat something earlier than later so it can digest. Okay. So I've made that change myself and I don't eat unless I need a little something. If I feel hungry, I'm trying to use intuition and not eat three hours before bed. Granted, I go to bed at 8 PM school nights, Sunday to Thursday that I avoid eating a big meal after 5 PM. And typically we eat our main meal about two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon. And so I find myself full the rest of the day, but I'm starting to be more honoring my body if it needs more food to have a little snack if I need something. Okay, so listen, if you're hungry, keep it simple, eat, all right? Negative impact on active women. Active women, intermittent fasting can be detrimental if they have, unless they have conditions as PCOS, Women naturally have more oxidative fibers, making them more metabolically flexible, means they have more free free fatty acids, require less glucose during prolonged exercise. Women's oxidative fibers, which have a higher aerobic capacity, allows them to sustain long duration, low intensity exercise, we call zone two. We can utilize free fatty acids more efficiently, but need some glucose. Key part there. We need some glucose to activate these free fatty acids. So that is the first rabbit hole I went down that we'll go into. Women typically do not deplete liver muscle glycogen as much as men during exercise. Okay. So we'll go into these individually a little bit more. Increased stress and cortisol. Another huge area and uh, something I can relate to. And when I do functional lab testing for my clients, that are these high performers similar to my old self that we can see, are we doing too much? Are we constantly raising cortisol? Now, fasted workouts and extended fasting periods elevate cortisol levels, increasing overall stress. This can prevent women from reaching high intensity exercise intensities that they need in order to trigger the beneficial hormone response as growth hormone and testosterone, which help lower cortisol. Another key part of a rabbit hole to go into right there. The next rabbit hole we'll go into is kiss peptin neuron, neurons and hormonal disruption. Women have a two distinct areas of kiss peptin neurons in the brain, unlike men who have one. The neurons regulate these kiss peptin hormones regulate appetite, your luteinizing hormone, estrogen, thyroid function, and prolonged fasting can down-regulate these neurons, leading to thyroid dysregulation and altering luteinizing hormone pulses, affecting endocrine function. We'll go into that. Next is circadian rhythm and eating timing, aligning your eating patterns, as we briefly talked about, 
with your circadian rhythm. This improves cognitive function and reduces thyroid dysfunction. Populated Population studies indicate that people who ate earlier in the day have better outcomes than those who delay eating until noon. Cortisol, if you do the Dutch car test, cortisol peaks about 30 minutes after wake, waking. For women, fasting during this peak increases your sympathetic drive, causing them to feel tired but wired. Small meal in the morning, we'll talk about that as well, can signal the hypothalamus that nutrients are available. We are safe, helping to balance the day's hormonal fluctuations. Another rabbit hole. So we have many videos to do. Now we've got perimenopause and fasted training. Women in perimenopause experience more hormone fluctuations and higher baseline cortisol. Now this is a fascinating topic for me personally because I got my Adrenal exhaustion, as I said, came along 2013. I was, how old am I? So I was 42 years old. You are in perimenopause 10 to 15 years. So say 10 years before you go through menopause. I'm not going through menopause yet at 52. But perhaps my adrenal dysfunction, height, HPA axis dysfunction was partially to do with the hormones. I was more sensitive to all the stress I was putting on my body during that time of doing really low carbohydrate fasted workouts. I was efficient at burning fat for fuel, but perhaps I was everything I was doing. I was more sensitive. It was more fragile. It was a fragile flower. And I became broken. <laughs> so fasted training during this time can increase your stress and hinder achieving necessary exercise intensities. Fueling before high intensity workouts is crucial to avoid moderate intensity. As she talks about working out too easy to be hard and too hard to be easy, finding that, avoiding that zone three, we say, and finding it, you're truly doing intervals, high, low, high, low, zone four, down to zone one, back up. Sprint interval trainings are 10 to 45 seconds max, and you're coming all the way up and then a long recovery zone one before you hit it again. Basically, the interview emphasizes the importance of considering individual hormone responses for active women, aligning with our eating patterns to our natural circadian rhythm in order to optimize our health and performance. We will go down many of these rabbit holes in future episodes, looking at women in oxidative fibers, lasting and metabolic flexibility, brain hormone effects, so going into each one a little bit deeper, looking at key points on what she was saying, the nutrition that she'll have a double espresso sweetened with almond milk and a scoop of protein powder for her carbs and protein. She talks about pre-workout as a strength workout, having 15 grams of protein pre-workout aids fuel availability, increases post-exercise Oxygen consumption, enhancing recovery and busting metabolism. Interesting. Up to an hour of cardio or more than an hour, I would say, you may perform better having some carbohydrates, 30 grams. So what I want to do is a rabbit hole of what does that look like? What is 15 grams of protein? Maybe I'm doing essential amino acids by perfect aminos or Keon, throwing those in some water. I can't do stevia, so my option is having the tablets of perfect aminos or Keon capsules. Meal timing, pre-workout, enough to raise your blood sugar, signal the hypothalamus that we have a little bit of fuel on board, we're safe, we're not going starvation, not having too much stress in our body, and it's not a full meal. It's She's not saying we need to eat a ton of food, just having some, to me, just having calories in my coffee. Now, what I'd like to know is, does my, just having a little bit of butter in my coffee, do I need necessarily have butter and heavy cream? Does that count? Or what type of carbs, if I have sweetened almond milk, I don't like, what are my options? Maybe protein powder. I don't like sweetness, so I don't know what I would do because I don't like 
uh, I have vanilla whey protein powder, but it's too sweet. I don't like the taste. So what do you do? We'll figure that out. Meal timing, neural hormonal impact. So try not to say so. I try not to say like, but now I realize I say so all the time. Meal timing, blah, blah, blah. So that is what I want to go into. Chronic fasting, what happens to hormones, the next rabbit hole, how that can disrupt hormones, what she's talking about, that 30 minutes post waking, what that means, cortisol awakening response, delaying your food, what happens in there. That is my goal. So if you're interested, stay connected, subscribe to Coach Debbie Potts on our YouTube channel, and we'll dive into this even more. Lots of rabbit holes to go into if you're curious as me. Enjoy. Enjoying my journey to be fit and healthy as we age, men and women.